Welcome back to the Director's Choice. Sasuke Uchiha is one of the most astounding characters in the Naruto animated series. With a truly complex personality, intense character development, and the good looks that we only seem to find in animations. Hold it right there! What are you even talking about? It's no wonder that Sasuke is as loved by fans as the star of the show, Naruto. In this episode of Director's Choice, we are taking a step into the past, present, and future versions of Sasuke Uchiha. From facing off in a battle with his friends time and again, to placing himself under the tutelage of an evil mentor, Sasuke has provided several heart-stopping moments for fans and viewers. But what were the events that shaped him to become that type of person? Was there any hope for his redemption from the start? Or was that simply a nice curve to the storyline? How does he use his anger to deal with his pain and other emotions? And above all else, who exactly is Sasuke Uchiha? Stick around, and you will most definitely find out as we take a closer look at the life of Sasuke Uchiha. Ready? Let's jump right in. Sasuke was born into the Uchiha clan as the youngest son of Mikoto and Fugaku Uchiha. He had an older brother, Atachi, a prodigy and the pride of the Uchiha clan and the entire village. As the second and youngest son, Sasuke had several standards set for him right from birth. Itachi had left huge footprints, which Sasuke was expected to fill, and as a result, he was constantly compared to his elder brother, especially by their father. Despite the non-criticism from his clan and village, Sasuke never hated his brother for being a talented genius. Instead, Sasuke from a young age strived to meet up to the expectations and approval of his brother. Sasuke and Itachi had a very loving relationship. Sasuke adored his brother and Itachi looked out for Sasuke, ensuring that he didn't feel the gap between them too much. While Itachi allowed Sasuke to partake in some of his adventures, and watch him train, he didn't necessarily help him become a better shinobi. But even that wasn't enough to make Sasuke hate his older brother. Sasuke had a fun and interesting childhood, despite the pressure he felt from everyone to be better skilled and match up to his brother. As they grew older, Sasuke started attending the Koniha Ninja Academy. Yes, but that was a different era. Graduate? After just a single year at the academy? Itachi began to grow distant from his family and the Uchiha clan, with Itachi out of the limelight, Sasuke became the focus of their father, and he enjoyed it while it lasted. Sometime after Itachi's estrangement started, Sasuke returns home to find the entire Uchiha clan, including his parents, murdered. Sasuke's heartbreak worsens when he realizes that his beloved brother was the culprit behind the deaths, and the pain eats deeper when Itachi pretty much tells him that he is not worth killing. Before leaving, Itachi advises Sasuke to hate him and use that anger to gain power and develop his abilities in order to become a worthy opponent and have a shot at actually killing Itachi. In the briefest of moments, Sasuke lost everything he had ever known, his family, his clan, and most importantly, the love and relationship he had with his brother. And just like that, the happy, passionate child was replaced with a young man who wanted nothing more than to avenge the Uchiha clan and kill the person he had once loved most in the world. So that traitor has finally died, has he? Poetic that someone who killed his clan got taken down by his own kin. But damn it all! I wish that we had gotten our hands on him first. I wonder how much he'll get. Sasuke Uchiha had to live with a new reality. He was the only remaining member of the Uchiha clan, with the exception of his brother and he dealt with that reality by allowing the anger to creep into his heart. Sasuke lost all regard for morals and empathy. He assessed everyone he met based on their strength and abilities, to know if they would be likely opponents in the future, or if they simply weren't worth his time. The only thing Sasuke was interested in was learning as fast and as much as possible to start the hunt of his brother. His entire life's mission at that point was vengeance and a misplaced need to restore honor to the clan's name by becoming as powerful as he could be. Sasuke's pursuit of power made him push away every attempt at a friendship that was made by his fellow members of Team 7. 
particularly Naruto, who enjoyed annoying him to no ends. Listen, just let that stuff come naturally. Let's take Naruto. You could go with Dimwit, Bird Brain. Come on, you're killing me here. Sasuke's personality was standoffish, cold, and generally unpleasant like he had lost the light in his life and could no longer find beauty or fun in anything. Under the lessons of Kakashi Hataki, Sasuke saw glimpses of the importance of strength and teamwork. For a brief moment, he almost considers allowing people to get close to him, but ultimately, Sasuke's pursuit of power overwhelmed every other thing in his life. The situation becomes gloomier when he runs into Itachi, refueling his anger and driving him into being manipulated by Orochimaru. On the brink of his decision to accept Orochimaru's offer of power, Sasuke is confronted by Kakashi, who tries to make him see reason into the fact that he had found a new family with Team 7 while chasing after the ghosts of his dead family. But Sasuke's mind was made up, and he went to train with Orochimaru, despite being aware that he was being used. Now you'll see I can be heartless, even to you. Not forgetting the fact that Sasuke was so brilliant and talented that he was the top of the class at the academy, it is no surprise that he soon realizes that allowing Orochimaru to use him would be disgracing his clan when all he wanted was to avenge them. Soon after leaving Orochimaru, Sasuke and Itachi clash again, and this time Sasuke successfully defeats Itachi. But the victory is short-lived as Sasuke learns the truth behind the death of their clan. A wave of newfound anger fills Sasuke when he realizes that the Konoha and its citizens had destroyed his clan and ruined his and Itachi's lives. And so Sasuke's quest for vengeance was born. This is it. This is what I've been waiting for. So... Well, Sasuke... It was hidden in you all along. It is said to trap and seal away those it pierces in a genjutsu. Orochimaru has long searched for that sword. After spending years in anger, pain, and desolation, Sasuke was shattered to learn that his brother had been protecting him by pretending to hate him. His love for his brother returned with a fearsome quest for vengeance. Sasuke became committed to a new mission. What's wrong with you? Hey! What do you care? It's none of your business! I have my own path to follow now. Sasuke wanted to destroy Konoha Village for what they had made his brother do, and their role in his unhappiness and grief. Sasuke sunk further into the darkness of his anger and destroyed anything in his path without a second thought. His quest for vengeance mixed with a desire to purify the Uchiha clan name, for which he took on the sole responsibility. Sasuke felt that he was the one who had to balance the good and evil in the world, beginning with Konoha. But that would have simply led to his destruction, and Naruto, who had become very invested in Sasuke's well-being, was not willing to give up on his friend. Naruto managed to convince Sasuke by placing great value on their friendship, and Sasuke decided to give up his quest for vengeance. Sasuke chose, instead, to start a journey for redemption by becoming a defender and protector rather than a destroyer. Sasuke regained value for his friendships, made committed connections with others, and started a romantic relationship with Sakura, his former teammate. What are you doing here, Sasuke? A whole lot has happened, but I've decided to protect the Hidden Leaf Village now. All right! Team 7 is finally back in action once again! Sakura! Sasuke! Let's go! Sasuke and Naruto came to a mutual understanding of their friendship and respect for each other after a long and tiring fight, but that wasn't the only thing that Sasuke was able to realize. Sasuke saw the value of being loved unconditionally, such that giving up on the other person wasn't an option, and that ignited his good self. Naruto, I'll be right here with you. <sighs> Sasuke decided that he needed to seek atonement by embarking on a journey for redemption across the world, with newfound perspective and appreciation. 
While on his travels, Sasuke would often step in to help whenever any of the five great nations needed help. And if it was something he didn't want to deal with, he found ways to inform those involved before they get hit by the catastrophe. In that period, Sasuke became an iconic figure, especially in Konoha, and he regained the trust and respect of the people. During his travels, Sasuke had encounters that further convinced him of the fact that his brother, Itachi, was a good person, and that he had the qualities to follow Itachi's path as a leader, which is what he ended up doing for Konoha, albeit from a distance. Years later, Sasuke realizes that his home is wherever Sakura is, and he returns to Konoha. Sasuke and Sakura start a family together, and they give birth to a daughter, Sarada. But shortly after his daughter is born, Sasuke has to go on missions that take him far away from Konoha, and Sarada grows up without actually knowing her father. When an imposing threat occurs that makes Sasuke return to Konoha, he is reunited with his family, only to leave again after a while. Due to his frequent travels, Sasuke finds it difficult to connect with Sarada. With some introspection, he decides to take on the same path he had been brought up with, and he assists his daughter with her training. Alongside his official duties, carrying out investigations on behalf of the nation, Sasuke also becomes a mentor to Naruto's son, Baruto. Well, so far, and I haven't had that weird paralysis from then either. That wasn't something as simple as mere paralysis. Look, I'm not trying to scare you or anything, but what happened to you back there wasn't normal. Sasuke's ability to use his past as lessons for others shows a great sign of improvement in his perspective and approach toward responsibility. At that stage, Sasuke's character arc is complete as he successfully overcomes his complexes and enjoys the free time he gets with his family. Sasuke Uchiha didn't live an easy life in any way whatsoever. Right from birth, he chased after goals and aspirations that weren't for him, living in the shadow of an elder brother whom he adored. Sasuke's anger at the betrayal of his brother motivated his pursuit of power, and when the betrayal faded into guilt, he sought out vengeance. From the progression of Sasuke's life journey, we can see a clear parallel to reality. As humans, we always try to find the next source of energy to motivate us into setting and achieving goals. And while that isn't a bad thing, it is important to realize what is and isn't morally acceptable. Sasuke had Naruto to help him find the light, and that shows the importance of friendship. Be sure to surround yourself with people who will be willing to reach out into the dark and pull you up to the light. That's all for today. Thank you for joining us on the breakdown of the life of Sasuke. Take a look at this other recent clip by Director's Choice, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of our latest videos.